I've, I've been working in, in medicine now for, for 25 years and I've seen the era before genomics was available and what we could provide to families. And what's happening now, every week we are get, giving people answers directly related to this work. It's extremely exciting and it is truly a revolution. I'll just quickly introduce genomics. I'm not going to make it too technical. Um, but I wanted to give you a flavour of how making a genetic diagnosis has changed over time and to give you some, some practical examples of how this technology which is embedded at the KCCG is revolutionising the answers to why some families have got diseases. And also very exciting for us, just over the last few weeks, these results leading to remarkable changes of treatment for children who would have died without this. And something about how the cost of, of making diagnosis is being reduced through genomics, and really it's all about providing answers to families. I think genomics is unique. Um, whole genome sequencing, which is the capacity to look at all of our DNA in one, in one, in one go, um, is now available to us on a population scale. But all of this, it's new, but it sits in a historical context. And I suspect that in not too long in the future, people will look back on our era and we will look at genomics as being the equivalent of the revolution that the microscope caused in the 17th century. And we've kind of forgotten how revolutionary that was, but people had no idea about bacteria or parasites or the sort of things that were in pond water. And suddenly the microscope opened up new science, new therapies. And genomics is doing absolutely the same thing. So we can only see what's visible and the genomics is allowing us to see away from the light under the lamppost into the darkness. And what we're seeing is truly remarkable. So what are the details? If you look at our body cells under, under the microscope, you see the chromosomes, which are structures that look like that. But these are made of a long strand of the DNA molecule, three billion of these base pairs. And the DNA itself is the genetic code, which is four letters. And depending on the exact order of these four letters, that codes for different things inside the body. And each of those codes is a gene. And there are about 20,000 of these in each cell. Not that long ago, I'm talking about five years, we could only really test one of these 20,000 genes at a time. And it took quite a long time, it was expensive, and we didn't get an answer that often. Families would come and see me and many other geneticists, we would try the best pick gene, and often we would not get an answer. And genomics is changing that. We're now making diagnoses in up to 50% of people who come and see us whose families have got a genetic condition. What's driving this revolution? It's a rapid um, decreasing cost of doing this testing. The Human Genome Project, um, which was, was happening at the beginning of my training, lasted something like 15 years. And it was begun in the United States, but many countries around the world took part. And as has been mentioned this morning, the cost of doing one genome through the Human Genome Project was something like $3 billion. And it took 15 years. What we have now is approximately $3,000 for one genome, which can be done in less than a week. It's truly revolutionary, the change in the scale of what can be achieved. So this is going from something that would have been a global project that might have helped one person to something that can truly help many people in society. And over the last four years, the, sort of the, the, the rapidity of these discoveries has been astounding. You know, the proof of principle of genomic testing was not that long ago. It was, it was at the end of the first decade in the 2000s. But very rapidly over a period of four years, the first diseases were identified by, by genomic testing. And we've got to the point now that for some conditions such as intellectual disability, we're getting up to 40 to 50% diagnoses. The sort of things that I'm talking about are called Mendelian disorders after Gregor Mendel. Uh, the Austrian monk who looked at this in, in the colour of pea flowers in the 19th century. And there are many thousands of these conditions. We know what many of them are clinically, so we can make those diagnoses, but we don't know what all the genes are that are associated with them. And this graph shows you the rapidity of gene discovery. And Australia is truly part of this global context now. We're finding that one new disease gene is now being identified around the world virtually every day. And so within the next five to ten years, we are very likely going to know what the genes are for all of these very specific conditions. 
it's an extremely exciting time to be working in, in, in human medicine. So how does the Kinghorn Centre fit into this? Um, it was established in October 2012, and the mission is really to implement genomic uh, testing in medicine as routine healthcare, and we are achieving that. This is a photograph of one of the instruments in the laboratory, and this revolution has really been promoted by philanthropy. Of course the government gave us money, of course research grants gave us money, but the Kinghorn family and many of you have provided the resources to make this a possibility. We've proven that it works. We've taken a group of um, 50 families um, who have come to our clinics with a variety of different medical conditions which we have thought were all genetic. And we have shown that about 30 to 40% of these we've been able to make a diagnosis in. And these were children and families where the diagnosis was not available previously. So what we're doing here is consistent with international practice. We're showing that genomic testing is leading to rapid diagnoses and to gene discovery. And I'd like to give you some concrete examples of these successes, particularly how they're changing treatment. I think we've achieved what, I don't like using the word miraculous, but I think this is really quite, quite a miraculous cure. Just in the last few weeks, um, we were referred uh, a DNA sample from a family who have a young child with an inherited disease of the immune system at St. Jules Hospital. And the illness in this child was so severe that uh, he was in intensive care and was expected to die. There had been poor responses to the standard treatments for immunodeficiencies. And the genomic testing as offered here was seen as being the last chance to get an answer for this family. And we did provide an answer. We found alterations in a specific gene two weeks ago through genomic testing here at the Garvin. And this gene has led to a specific diagnosis which has changed the availability of treatment for this child. It's given the immunologists in intensive care a clue as to the right medicine to use. And this medicine was started and it was suggested by our genomic testing and there has been a startling improvement in the health of this child. It's converted this child from one who was expected to die to one who was likely to go home. I think that's truly miraculous and it's, it's happened through our testing here. I'd like to give you a further example. I'm, a lot of examples I'm giving you are, for, are, are about immunodeficiencies, and we have a specific project looking for genes in families where uh, children and adult, have, adults have got um, this type of disorder. Uh, it's not just drugs. Um, it can be very simple things. Um, there was another child who had an immunodeficiency who couldn't fight against infections because of that. And despite treatment, the only possibility for this child was to have a bone marrow transplant. Now, yes, that's available, doesn't always work. It's unpleasant for the family and the child. When it works, it works beautifully, but it's also very expensive. We would have had to have found a donor who, who could be identified who was tissue matched, and there's never a guarantee of success despite very, very good bone marrow transplantation treatments. And what we found through genomic testing was that this child had a very rare cause of this immunodeficiency that was related to a simple lack of vitamin B12. So a very rare disorder that I had not heard of before, but when we saw the gene and the output from the genomic testing, it suddenly became clear what the cause of this child's immunodeficiency was. And what happened? The child was injected with vitamin B12 and a bone marrow transplant was avoided. So you might say these are very rare and unusual cases, but this is just in the last month or so that we've had both, both of these families helped by <coughs> genomic testing here at the KCCG. But more importantly for this family, we now know that this is an inherited cause of an immunodeficiency, and if they want to have more children in the future, they can be ensured of having a healthy child if that is what they want. So it's not just treatments, but answers. Um, we can also provide um, uh, answers to families where they have really uh, exhausted all the hope of the current medical system. This is just from the last three days. I was looking at this on Saturday. Um, there was a family who was referred to us from Melbourne who have had two children with a severe epilepsy and intellectual disability. And we've identified the gene that's caused this through genomic testing, and now this family have got an answer. They, they've been reassured and they've been given hope that they can have another healthy child without epilepsy and intellectual disability. Um, none of this would have been possible without genomic testing. 
um, if we'd had to go through all these 20,000 genes one by one, we wouldn't have got an answer for these families. What this testing is doing, it's allowing us to find the needle in the haystack, the one out of the 20,000 genes that we need to focus on to make a diagnosis. We call this a diagnostic odyssey, and I think what genomic testing is allowing us is to shortcut through to get to the direct answer. <coughs> so the benefits, I think we're providing answers for families with children with severe genetic disorders, but also with adults. It's providing confidence for families to have more healthy children particularly where we're finding that the, the disease is caused by a one-off gene change that hasn't been inherited from either parent. It's also giving us the ability to change treatments and to make them very specific for the gene that has the mutation. But I'd like to just finish off by saying that also for adults, there are some very, very, very costly things that are happening in our community year after year that genomics can help in. And the thing that I'd like to talk about is drug reactions. So many of us are taking medications. They're usually very effective, but occasionally people will have an allergic reaction to a medicine or it will cause damage to an organ in the body. And this is really very significant. If you look at the number of hospital admissions around Australia every year, we're looking at 2 to 3% of all hospital admissions are due to drug reactions. Now, it's not that commonly going to happen to any one of us, but globally in society, this is expensive and it uses up a lot of resources. We're looking at one $1.2 billion a year, every year in Australia, to look after people who have had a drug reaction. It's extremely significant. So genomics can also be involved in trying to predict the genes that might be related to a specific person having a drug reaction or might help us choose one drug versus another. And this is called pharmacogenomics. So essentially, in the future, I suspect many people will be having their genomes at birth. And an average cost of a drug reaction, if you look at the whole of society, might be about $5,000, if you take that $1.2 billion and average it out. And the cost of doing a genome is going to be less than that. So perhaps we're going to have a cost saving and also removing the suffering and the hospitalizations by helping people and doctors choose the most appropriate drug for them. We could save a lot. Even if 10% of the drug reactions are avoided through genomics, that's going to be a very substantial saving to our society. So, key messages from today. I think genomics is becoming the key medical genetic diagnostic technology of our time. I think the rollout of these technologies is going to happen in New South Wales and is going to be driven by us here at the KCCG. I suspect that the application of next generation sequencing will save resources across the entire health budget. We're going to be able to avoid at least a proportion of drug reactions. We're going to be able to target specific therapies to very unwell people. And we're also going to be able to provide hope um, for families to have a healthy child when there is a genetic disorder in that family. We're providing good outcomes for these families right now. We are making a difference but it is going to require ongoing resources, particularly human resources. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to take some questions if you would like. <laughs>